Hey everyone, I'm Steve and I'm back in the shop here at the wood turning store. And in our last video, which you may have come from, we talked about the hurricane faceplate and mounting the hurricane faceplate onto a bowl. And I promised that we'd be turning this with some new hurricane carbide tools. So let's get at it. So I have my bowl blank. I'm gonna mount it onto my American Beauty lathe. So there we go. I'm not going to turn in reverse or anything like that. So I'm not going to tighten up these grub screws. And now we are going to look at getting started. Hurricane carbide tools are new for us. And we have a couple of different series. We have our full size series modeled after uh, a lot of common tools that are out in the market. We have a uh, rougher with two tips, a square tip and a slight radius tip. We have a finisher, we have a detailer, we have mid-size tools, and way over here, we have some hollowing tools. To get started, I am going to take the roughing tool, and here's the straight one, we can use that. Or in this case, I'll take the one which has a slight radius. I'll give you a look at that. Okay, now I'm gonna look at my bowl blank here. I'll pull this away. And one of the first things we need to do when looking at anything on the lathe is we wanna check our grain orientation. So this bowl blank is uh, mounted face grain. So as I mentioned before, this is the pith of the tree. Grain is running this way. This here is side grain, and right up here is end grain, okay? Now, it's much harder to see often uh, grain in a bowl blank as opposed to spindle, but one of the rules of thumbs that you really always should try and do when turning, and this may sound a little weird, but you always try as much as possible to cut side grain, not end grain. So. That's easy on a spindle, right? You're looking at the spindle and you say, hey, I'm cutting all uh, side grain. I don't have any end grain in my spindle, but what about in my bowl blank? So again, in the bowl blank here, we have side grain this way and we have end grain here. So when you start turning a bowl, most people mount the bowl up this way and they take their, and they take their tool and they come right in here, spin this around. But the problem is when you come around here, you're cutting right into end grain. And tools, particularly carbide tools, don't like that. So you'll start to get tear out here. So when roughing down a bowl, we are not going to start this way. We're actually gonna come around this way and use it to cut side grain only for as much as possible. Let's look at what we have here. If you can see from the top, uh, the way we cut this bowl blank, it's pretty uneven. It has a taper over here. It is flat on this side. If you take a look over here, you can see that it's hardly a circle. I'll bring my pencil around again, just over here. And again, I'm trying to think ahead and think about what this bowl blank is going to look like when I'm done. So if I put my pencil here, bring it out to the edge, my finished bowl blank is going to look something like that. Okay. The normal flow for those are, that are new out there <clears throat> is, again, we have this bowl blank mounted on the lathe and we are going to turn the outside of the bowl first, try and get that as round as possible. Then we are going to put a tenon on here. Then we'll take it off the face plate, turn it around, mount it in dovetail jaws, and hollow out the inside. So with that in mind, that this is our final shape, this is our first step, what we will do in this video is we'll just get the outside uh, turned. I don't even think we'll turn the tenon in this particular video. That'll be it. Try to keep the video short and we'll follow up with the next part.
Okay. If you are a new turner, it's highly advisable that you put on your face mask, um, <clears throat> particularly when things are rough. Um, if you get a catch, now is probably among the more likely times that something could happen. So a face mask would be, would be much better. Uh, you won't hear me in the microphone. I'm just going to keep on safety glasses, and we'll, we'll do it that way. Now, I'm looking here. Again, if you could see from the top down, this part here is closest to the tool rest. So I have a pretty short distance, maybe half an inch or so. I want the least amount of overhang. So I'm taking a look. And I'm actually a little bit close to the point where the taper on the back of the tool here is not clear of the, of the tool rest. I'm going to move this back just a little bit. And now at this point, I feel I can get the full surface of the bottom of the tool on the tool rest. Let's get it going and forward and see what that looks like. I check that I don't have any interference. We'll get it spinning. That's pretty slow. We are going to raise that speed up a little bit. In this case, it's about 1,000 RPM. So that was light passes. You can see that I took off this side. So looking down from the top, I'm almost parallel. At this point, I can move my tool rest in just a little bit. You don't have to, but this makes it a little better. And I want to show you my hand position here, particularly with the carbide tools, which are scrapers. You can see here that I have my elbow protecting the tool so that if I were to get a catch, it's supported by my elbow. If I were to be like this or like this, I don't have as much leverage. So I'm gonna be just about like that. We'll start it up again. Turn the speed up a little bit. As I come towards the center, you can see that my tool rest, not my tool rest, but my tool is a little above center. So I'll stop the lathe. And I will bring the tool rest down. so that my carbide roughing tool is right at about center. Now again, you can see I've taken about half of this, all the high spots out, start it up again. This way I'm able to get directly to the center. I've taken almost a complete pass across the front, but at this point, what we're able to do is we can start shaping the bowl. 
again, I'm not going to come from this side because that would be cutting right into end grain. I'm going to continue my process, but now you'll see me take longer and longer plunge cuts in here to start to shape this bowl. I'm still way out of round, so I'll be cutting a lot of air. So I'll go nice and easy, particularly when we're on the outside, and you'll see that all happen. I'm only taking about half the width or less of the carbide cutter at any time. Got a little bit of vibration, so I'll back that off. Back off the speed. I'm not taking the full width of the carbide cutter. and I'm cutting side grain the entire time. As you can see, as I'm getting more towards the edge here, I'm starting to get farther and farther away from the tool rest, starting to feel a little bit of the leverage in my, in my wrist and in my elbow. I'm gonna stop the lathe. And turn the tool rest this way, so that as I come across, I'll have less and less overhang. I should say, I'll have less overhang than if I were straight. As I look here, I've cut completely around. So at this point, what I've done is I am not cutting air. And I see something here that's really important to, to point out. We talked before, we will get this out of the way. We talked before about side grain and end grain. Again, so I'm going to look at that. And here is the grain, okay? So as this was coming around, I'm cutting side grain have a pretty decent finish, but if you, you can see here, this is end grain, so this is exactly where the end grain was coming around, and you get that tear out. It's a little bit better coming in this way. It would have been much worse if I was coming in this way. I can switch over. I mean, I could stay with the roughing tool, but obviously the square point is causing these things. I'll switch over to the finishing tool. Let the lathe come up to full speed. So that's with the round finishing tool. Let's take a look and see how we did. Not bad. Still, still have a little bit of tear out on the end grain, which is going to be here and right there. Over here on the side grain, pretty good. Not as good, not as good as with the traditional tool, but again, the advantage here is that I don't have to sharpen, don't have to do all of those things. I'll, I'll go back to the roughing tool and I'll just use this, again, just in small sections. So I'm back to my roughing tool, and we switched the cameras to give you a little bit of a closer view so you can see what's happening better. Again, about half of the tool at any time. 
you can just hear particularly at the end that I'm cutting air. I'm hanging over the tool rest quite a bit. At this point, it's not so easy for me to come in this side. I am actually going to do what I said not to do, but just to show you, I'll come in from this way, right in here. You can, let's stop it right there, because that's a good learning point. And there you go. So again, that's exactly what I was talking about. We came right into side grain and blew that out. Uh, so my choices are continue, deal with this, or try and come in from the side, which is a little harder to do because of my tool rest. I hope you can see and hear the difference between coming straight on this way, that's right into end grain. You can hear it. I can feel it. And we have all kinds of tear out here. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let me go over here and I'll switch over to a robust curved rest, that should help. So I've switched over to the robust tool rest, what we call the interior, I'm sorry, the exterior curved rest. That's allowing me to keep a pretty dis uh, constant distance around here. I've switched over to the finishing tool and let's see if we can get all the way around. So I've just about gotten to my final shape here. You can see uh, there is some tear out here right at very predictable spots. Here's the side grain coming through. Right here is end grain. So we lift the fibers there and it's gonna be exactly here. Very important to realize that, very important. Here and here, very predictable. And right here is a nice finish because that is side grain or downhill. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to loosen up my number 440 screw, rotate the carbide cutter about 90 degrees or so, just to give myself a fresh, sharp edge. In another video, I'll show you how to sharpen these. No need to throw them out after a couple of passes. Uh, so I'll take my final pass around here. This way from inner diameter to outer, uh, that will be about it. And then we'll come back in the next video and turn a tenon. So here we go. One thing you may have noticed, because I'm no longer doing heavy roughing cuts, that I moved my body position over to the front of the lathe and I was able to come in straight. Even though, again, we're going into that end grain, I have some tear out here. That should be sandable. So that's it for this video. Again, just to look at it, we have our shape here, cut with uh, carbide turning tools. In our next video, we'll turn a tenon in preparation for removing it off the face plate to turn it around, chuck it up, and turn out the inside of the bowl. I hope that was helpful. 
Uh, if you have any comments, please leave them down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps our channel. Thanks again for watching.